Geometry Nodes is like artist-friendly programming, letting you perform actions based on rules that you define. And you can do some crazy things with it. Create things that were previously impossible or build tools to enable faster production. Every artist should learn the basics, which is what this series is all about. You'll leave with an understanding of how to use the core functionality of Geometry Nodes while making a practical sugar-coated candy. Let's begin. So with a brand new scene opened up, go to your Geometry Nodes tab, which is at the top there. And when you do that, you will see a familiar 3D viewport on your top right. And then on the left, you've got this scary looking thing you've never seen before. It's called the spreadsheet. Um, you won't need to use it. Basically, it's just showing you the exact coordinates of like vertices and faces and things. You can see the position of it is changing as I move that vertice there. Useful in a handful of cases, but really we don't need it. Out of sight, out of mind. So I'm just gonna right click, join these areas so we don't have to look at it. And now I'm gonna click on new. And now we have a geometry nodes system applied to this cube. Um, you will also note you have a modifier that has been added here called geometry nodes. And that is because geometry nodes are importantly a modifier. And just like any other modifier, the order of it matters, whether I have my subsurf modifier before it or after it, because it will work top to bottom. Um, and also you could actually add another geometry node system right underneath it. You could have two, so it, it does this one first and then it does this one after it. But generally you only need one. So this uh, system here is, the easiest way to think of geometry nodes is really like it is post-processing for meshes. Okay, so we've got our input over here, which is our mesh, this cube here, and then it's working left to right and then it's feeding us an output over here. So whatever I put between those two points, it will do as a post-processing step. And let me demonstrate that. You don't have to follow this, this is just for demonstration. I'm gonna add in a transform here, and I could move the cube, I could rotate the cube, and I could scale the cube. Now that looks like I have changed the object, looks like I've changed the mesh, but actually I haven't. If you go into edit mode, you can see that the cube is still there. That hasn't changed, that hasn't moved, because that part, the mesh part, is what is over here. It's only this part here, and then this part here, which is then creating, and it's basically doing that operation, and it's using it here as a modifier. If I disable it in the 3D viewport, um, you can see that I've still got my original mesh there, right? Um, so that's that's really the easiest way to, to think of geometry nodes. Um, but you can do a lot more fancier things with it than just a simple rotation and scale and things. Like for example, um, we want to do a, a sugar scattering system on our cube and the cube is then gonna become uh, a lolly. We're gonna make it look like a lolly or a, a candy if you're American or whatnot. Everything has become American. We just call it candy now. Anyway, um, the, the, the node that we are looking for by the way, Shift A, if you wanna add a node, you can also find it here. Uh, the node that we're looking for, look, you've never heard of it before, you wouldn't know which one to use until you follow a tutorial and then you see it. And honestly, that's the easiest way I think it, that's the best way to learn, in my opinion, is to not like look up like in alphabetical order, like what does each of these things do and when do I need to use it? Like it just, you need to know it when you need to know it. So like try and do things yourself and then like look up, Google it, you find a screenshot or a tutorial and then you learn about that node that sounded complicated or weird before. So in this case, we want to create uh, scattered objects. So we need points. So underneath points, we're looking for distribute points on faces. So when you click, uh, and if I just, uh, you can see as I mouse over this uh, this line here, if I just click, do a single click, it'll then automatically join it for me. Now joining nodes is, if you're familiar with shaders, it's roughly the same thing, but you generally wanna have the same color go into the same color. So green to green, purple to purple, et cetera. There are exceptions to that, and we'll talk about that later, but that's just a general uh, rule. So what this has done is it has taken our mesh data of a cube, and it said, okay, instead of the mesh, you want to see points and it has now scattered points on that. And you can see if I increase the density there, it looks like the shape of my cube. Okay, cool. I can do I can do really cool things with these points. I could do animations, I could make them fall, I could do everything. But this is just uh, you know the, the most basic form of it. Now, we actually wanna have not just the points by themselves, because if I, if I was to render, actually I would get nothing. Um, because points don't actually render, they're just for the 3D viewport until you reference them and tell them what the, to render them as. Um, I 
as well as these points, I want to see the cube. So I want to use the cube data twice. And I can do that with another node that you'll need all the time, which is join geometry, shift A join geometry. By the way, if you can't ever remember which, which menu it is under, if you just go up to search and then just type in join or whatever it is you're looking for, um, you can find it that way as well. So if I drop this in here after my points on faces, you can see this input here is different. It's longer than these other ones. And this is actually a new concept for geometry nodes. This didn't used to exist, but this will let you put in as many inputs as you want into this. So I can, for example, I can take my output of my original cube data and put it in here, which is, it's to me, that's pretty cool. It's like, it's using the cube data twice. It's using it for rendering the cube. And it's also just taking removing the cube data, replacing it with points, and then it's using that as well, and it's combining it into one, which is very cool. So um, that's great. Now, again, if I was to render this, I wouldn't see those points because they, they do not render unless you tell them what to render as. So to do that, we need another node right after here, not before it, but after it, points. We're looking for points, no, not points, sorry, instances. Instance on points, not two points, completely separate. Uh, instance on points. Someone's honking their horn right outside. All right, if I was to drop this in here, you can see the points have vanished because now it has, you're saying replace those points with whatever is in the instance right here. And we've got nothing in there right now. So we need another object. We need to put an object into this instance here and we want them to look like sugar crystals. Sugar crystals are basically little cubes. You can, by the way, you could, if you were fancy, you could use cube, uh, where is it, mesh primitives. You could add in a cube if you wanted to, but we want to bevel it later and you know it's just helpful if it's its own object. So I'm going to, in the 3D viewport, add another cube and let's just move this to the side. And I also want to scale it down so that it's much smaller than this. So I'll just scale this and I'm going to type in 0.1. So S, 0.1, and then enter, and then it will scale it to uh, a tenth of the size. Okay, I have to make sure I'm like 10th to 1%, no, 10%. Anyways, all right. Also, you'll know, by the way, if you click on another object, like a camera, a lamp, or anything like that, the geometry nodes have vanished. And that's because it will, by default, it'll only show you what is selected. And it'll also only show you what's selected in your modifier stack there. If you don't want to have to keep like searching for your object in order to see this, if you click that pin icon there, then that will pin this here. No matter what is selected, this will always be here until I unpin that. So we want to have that uh, pinned. All right, so I'm going to rename this cube here, sugar crystal. And then I want to reference this in my geometry node setup down here. So I can do that very simply. And I love that you can do this now in Blender. Just click from my outliner down here into this node setup. And it's now automatically created an object info node with that object selected, which is pretty cool. All right, so I wanna reference this into the instance so you can probably guess. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna go green to green, geometry to instance, ha ha. All right, now that we've done that, um, you can see that it, it's doing something, but it's not working the way that we had hoped. And that is because when we added in this cube and we scaled it down, when you've scaled something down, it's not referencing it in your geometry nodes or everywhere else in Blender perhaps until you have applied the scale of that. So I did this deliberately just so that you could see the scale of this is still 0.1. So we need to apply it by hitting control A and then hit scale. And now those values are one and now it's referencing it correctly. Right, so if I was to adjust this uh, density here, you can see that I can choose how many sugar crystals do I want to appear on my, uh, my cube, <laughs> it doesn't look very detailed yet. We'll, we'll get there. Um, and that value will change it there, which is cool. All right, now it currently looks like, I don't know, like a, a lazy spaceship, you know, like how they used to do like Greeble on, uh, on spaceships and things for like old animations. And it was just like blocky shapes. Um, we want this to look like sugar crystals, which are clinging on and those have to be rotated. So each of these little cubes here, we want to be rotated. Now there is a rotation value here in this instance on points. But if we were to change this, it's changing all of the points one by one. Whereas we want to create a random value for each of those points. So for that, we need another node that you will use all the time as well. And that is, let's just move this up. Shift A, utilities, random value. Again, you can also search for it random if you can never uh, remember what it is, random value. 
and does what it says on the tin. Random value generates a random value between, in this case, zero and one. Now this is a float. A float is a single number. Um, and that's a gray output, a single number. Whereas rotation is three, it's three axes, X, a Y, and a Z. So you could actually connect this into it like that and you would get rotation. But you would see that you've got kind of like a pattern, right? Like they're all kind of rotating almost to the same sort of thing. And it's because like, let's say it's generating a value of like for one of these points, like 0.2. It's rotating it at exactly, you know, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, or you know, whatever, like that for all three of the axes, which is not actually what we want. We want each axis to have its own value independently. So instead of float, what I'm looking for is vector. Okay, so now if I drop this in here, you can see we get a lot more values um, because there's three, there's three, there's the min for each of the three axes, x, y, and z, and x, y, and z for the max. Um, but now that we've got that, you can see that we've got a lot more uh, random rotation happening, right? Um, now, the other thing to note is like, okay, one, is that one degree? It looks like it's more than one degree. What is going on? This, this value here, these are actually radians. That's right, radians. What is a radian? A radian is 57.29 degrees, all right? It's a mathematical concept. And geometry nodes is generally mathematical. So it's, you just have to get used to it. There's like a lot of math functions and things like that when it comes to geometry nodes. Um, and radians is one of them. So this is not one degree, it is one radian, which is about 57. So it is giving us a random value between zero and 57-ish degrees. If we set this to two, it's a little bit more, right? It's giving us a little bit more rotation, but again, it's not 360. It's 360, it's like you could actually type in pi. Pi would be 180 right? Because it's uh, 3.142. It would be, uh, yeah, it's half of it, but actually we want double pi. So if you wanted to, you could type in two times pi, or there's a word for that, which is called tau, which I didn't know was a word until I needed it for this exact thing. Um, and Arendelle, uh, Arendelle's YouTube channel, everyone should subscribe. If you want to go deep into geometry nodes, like really deep, um, he's the master of it. Um, but tau, <laughs> tau is twice pi. It's the full circumference or whatever of the so I should pay attention to math, shouldn't I? Um, anyway, um, and just quickly for environments, like uh, if you were say scattering some photo scan rocks from Polygon or you're building an environment, um, in those cases, you would actually want to rotate on every th on only the Z axis. Anyways, all right, so now let's do the scale. So I'm gonna duplicate my random value here and I'm gonna plug this into my scale. Now, in the case of scale, uh, different to our uh, rotation, we don't want to have um, separate values for our X, Y, and our Z because we might get something that is not a cube shape, right? Um, this looks like they're the same value, but remember each it's generating a, a value like in between those, right? So you'll get some that are like rectangular prisms and things. So we want to keep it as a cube, but yeah, just like different values of the cube. So for that, we want to change it back to float and then plug that into scale. And now they all stay as cubes, but just different values in there. Now, I would never have the minimum set as zero because then that could technically be a value which you would not be able to see, but it would still be rendering. Um, so I'm just gonna make it just a little bit more. Yeah, you can see it's exactly what it's doing there. It's like a cube that's like invisible. Um, so yeah, I just make it a little bit more than zero and then it comes through. And there you go. And you can see now that we've got that, we've got the sizing that looks pretty good. If we cranked up our density there, you can sort of see what we're getting at with this tutorial. So we've learned about the basics of geometry nodes. Go ahead, join me in the next part as we delve a little more deeper into some of the idiosyncrasies. So click here on the screen and I'll see you there.